What's up folks, it is BatTube here, and today we're going to be looking at this SKMI oscilloscope that I got on eBay for 50 bucks. Super cheap, it was a good deal, I needed an oscilloscope uh, just to get into further electronics that I cannot get into with just a multimeter. I already have some knowledge, but with, a, with an oscilloscope, that's actually going to allow me to confirm the knowledge that I think I have from researching and learning and uh, taking courses etc online nothing in school mind you uh, so this is an SKMI let me tilt this up two channel oscilloscope this is a 30 megahertz oscilloscope it is the SK0300 uh, good luck finding any information about this uh, manual data sheets anything like that so this is an analog oscilloscope with just your basic analog oscilloscope uh, controls. The basic ones for the CRT and a bunch of typical ones for your two channels. Uh, the volts per division, uh, your variable knobs, your magnification by pulling, uh, input coupling, trigger coupling, a variable sweep, your time base. This is all like very basic, basic stuff, uh, basically an oscilloscope. Is not an oscilloscope without these things. Well, not a functioning one. So with the position, if you turn it all the way to the left, you will view the right side of the signal, the right side uh, further in time, and same with the opposite. You go back in time. You can also magnify your position uh, in time, where your voltage per division is when you're multiplying your magnification by five, if you pull it. That's going to be uh, stretching it in uh, volts uh, division, so uh, up and down. Uh, so you can also change between that whether or not you're looking to see the horizontal x-axis or just the y-axis. So at a single point in time, you can get a certain measurement. Uh, so with, with just a click, you can go to the y-axis and you will just get a single point measurement for that, uh, I guess. You could call it now for that now moment, I guess, for that very brief point in time. Uh, based on based on what you're triggering for, uh, what you're looking for, depending on your your trigger. So the magnification, I mean, any oscilloscope could operate without that, but it's also all very basic stuff. All right, so enough doing a bit of blabbing about uh, something that I don't really know what I'm talking about. Uh, so the whole reason for this video is I just got this and it needs to have a permanent placement on my desk. Um, I like it sitting flat and if I want it tilted up a bit, it will only be maybe a couple millimeters. So with that being said, this tilting bale is just 100% unnecessary to me. And due to the fact that I may want to set something on top of here, uh, keep in mind not covering all of the air, the air venting, um, this tilting bale will be in the way, no matter what I do, and there's no way to pull it off. So I figured it's a great excuse to uh, pull the hood off of this, get a look on the inside, and get rid of this tilting bale. Sorry about that folks, I kind of just realized how out of focus that was. Uh, the autofocus just could not manage to get a decent focus on this possibly because of the grill on the top. So I went into uh, manual mode, manual focus. And uh, hopefully I keep up with it. So let's start with the easiest one, obviously. There's a couple Phillips screws on the top. There's a single and there's four on both the left and right sides for the top panel. And that should be all we need. Alright, so here are the four. The side part. Sorry, the focus is kind of off over here. Uh, there we go, slight adjustment. Alright, so flip to the other side and the last four. My goddamn hand and screwdrivers mighty, mighty in the way. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have 
enough room to put a tripod next to me and film from a closer to first person point of view. So I have to do this more um, top view type of stuff, which usually works until we get to doing big stuff like this, tall stuff rather, and my tripod fails to go any taller. I'm gonna tip this down gracefully while not holding the top panel because it's not screwed in. Okay, I'm just gonna pull the tilting bail forward. Actually, I guess I can just use tilting bail to get it off. All right, folks, so I've got the case off, uh, just the top piece, and as you can see, these are the inner guts. So this is the SKMI SK0300, and the reason I'm showing the innards of this oscilloscope is because I was unable to find the innards anywhere online. Um, I don't specifically intend to go into detail on the innards of this because that's not what this video is about and there's many other videos explaining the way oscilloscopes do what they do uh, and they will explain it much better than I could ever so I would suggest maybe going over to Dave from EEV blog and uh, yeah just watch all of his videos honestly <laughs> so I did just want to show you quick so this is obviously the cathode ray tube this is your CRT, aka cathode, well, rather cathode ray tube, aka CRT. Um, this device here, that's how we get the display. Uh, we're going to have, obviously, this is probably going to be partially a high voltage power supply, maybe. Uh, well, that's probably the high voltage power supply down there, but it's going to be coming through here and it seems like all of the processing for the CRT and judging by the size of the gauge of the wire probably some power the main power going to the CRT so yeah some high voltage in there and obviously due to capacitors even though this is unplugged I'm not gonna go around in here touching until I was sure for a fact that there was nothing uh, powered for example I would turn on the oscilloscope like I just did even though it's unplugged it's uh, it's gonna drain drain some of the uh, some of the caps but potentially not all of them uh, depending on what is in circuit and what's not so I figured the footage of this would be useful potentially to anyone that may have this uh, unheard of scope and maybe need to see the insides of it and obviously you can see all of the adjustable pots everywhere which is a really nice sight so if there's anything that ever goes wrong with this unless it's a component failure it can very potentially uh, be solved or temporarily solved by adjusting a pot maybe if a capacitor or a resistor goes out of whack that is how you can fix that temporarily mind you Alright, so enough of the shaky camera. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I didn't really realize how shaky it was, and I guarantee it was quite a bit. Because I wasn't really paying too much attention to that. But anyways, back to this. Uh, all I really wanted to do, like I mentioned before, was take off the tilting bill. And uh, just have a look on the insides. Make sure there was nothing uh, very obviously wrong. Uh, maybe just get an idea of what the board looks like. So maybe if something does go wrong in the future, I may have an idea of where to look. So the tilting bail is easy. As you can see, there is one screw right there as well. On the other side, there's another screw. And all those pins right there, those are all of the different positions for the adjusting bail. So you pull it out like that. Let me see. Oh, there, there we go. You pull it out like that and you can adjust it and the pins go in and lock it in place. So I'm just go, gonna go ahead and take out the screws and take off the tilting bail and then we'll put this thing back together nice and easy. Alright, so just like that, now we have the other case with both sides. Looking the same, obviously. Now let's put this fucking thing back together. Turn it all the way around because I got it backwards. Make sure that the outer plates are going over and not under any of the side panels and potentially 
shorting something up. So very nicely, just like that. So this is supposed to slide. Kind of under the front panel. So if you push in the sides, you should be able to slide it forward. Should be able to. There we go. Obviously now the autofocus is like, what in the fuck is going on? It's like, I don't know, well that's partially fault of my arm so all right so no it's still not quite as far in as it should be no. Son of a bitch. here we go all right so the screw hole is lined up there it was a, a bit more difficult than I expected the front of the case actually goes under the uh, plastic front panel. All right, all right, get in there. You can do it. Alright, one side done nice and easy. Alright, that was just about as easy as it should have been. So, let's flip it over and just power it on. Alright, so... Obviously, it's powered on. Move the position over. Uh, move it down. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get a signal on this. Actually, yes, we can. Let's just make sure signal works. I don't actually have any oscilloscope probes. Uh, so I just rigged up this little BNC to single center line for the calibration uh, to get the the calibration signal, the signal out of it. So let's go to two. There we go. Okay, there's our signal. So yeah, scope works great. All right, folks. Peace out and peace for Ukraine.